in this moving memoir. International award-winning author Connie Spinoza masterfully explores the cultural history of the women within the world of chocolate. As a child, she frolicked in her family's pristine equatorial rainforest cacao plantations. Not yet knowing the intricacies of culture and history that surrounded women's roles in an industry as luscious as chocolate. But these early years piqued her curiosity and spurred decades of extensive travel. Her book exquisitely guides you on the illuminating journey across the globe to uncover the 5,300 year old history of the women who dedicated their lives to the world's most coveted indulgence. For centuries, chroniclers, historians, archaeologists, and scientists asserted that cacao originated in Mesoamerica. In 2018, news of a scientifically proven new origin for the world's most coveted sweet erupted like a giant molten chocolate volcano. Researchers found traces of cacao dating back 5,300 years ago in southeastern Ecuador. The Shuar ethnic group that has inhabited the Amazon River Basin for thousands of years were fierce warriors who refused to be dominated by the Spanish. The ancient Shuar women were the ones who cultivated the cacao and their knowledge and use of the frog poison they applied in their blow darts is widely recognized as extremely lethal. The word kakawa, cacao, is described in the Popol Vuh, or the Book of Council, the sacred Maya creation narrative. Throughout their long history, the Maya also developed hieroglyphic writing on copo fig tree bark. We can admire the elegant women who poured chocolate, as depicted in the Princeton vase and the Tudela Codex. But it's hard to imagine the tremendous effort made to turn bitter seeds into a drink for the gods. The women who cultivate cacao have always known that after harvesting and opening the cacao pods, the hard work has just begun. For traders and casicas, the marketplace had important social and political functions. The wealth amassed by the indigenous women producers and sellers of cacao and other luxury items is evident in the colonial records of the 16th century. The question of who served the first cup of chocolate in Spain remains an enigma. The first voyage that documents cacao as cargo is the 1544 voyage by Bartolomé de las Casas. The importance of chocolate as a traditional ritual persisted in the convents of colonial Mexico. But chocolate also impacted the daily lives of convents back in Spain, where the chocolate drink evolved into a money-making enterprise for creative nuns renowned for their culinary talents. Despite the culinary innovators in the convent kitchens of the Spanish world, the far-reaching ecclesiastical authorities sought to root out any scent of chocolate malfeasance. The 1610 inquisitorial records of colonial Mexico reveal numerous instances of women using food or drink and concocting what they believed were magical potions to achieve their goals. The two Spanish princesses credited with bringing the ritual of drinking chocolate to France were Anne of Austria and Maria Teresa, 
both the daughters of the King of Spain. Anne ensured that her son, King Louis XIV of France, married her niece, Maria Teresa of Spain, in 1660. At their betrothal, Maria Teresa gave Louis a decorated chest full of chocolate as an engagement gift. During their marriage, she was devoted to the Sun King and to drinking chocolate. The refined women at the court of Louis XIV were valued for their ideas that flowed during conversations. The most prolific and witty of these aristocrats was Madame de Sevigny. From her correspondence in 1671, it is apparent that drinking chocolate had become a trend among French aristocrats who discussed the benefits and possible health dangers of chocolate. Spanish noblewomen introduced chocolate to the Renaissance nobility of Italy. In 1539, Leonor de Toledo married Cosimo I de Medici, Duke of Florence, in a spectacular wedding. Members of the Medici family enjoyed chocolate as food and believed in its medicinal properties. But it was the nun apothecaries of Renaissance Florence that innovated syrups for coughs, oils, unguents for burns and wounds, powders, pills, purgatives, and medicinal waters. The Quaker faith would become the common thread among the confectioners and chocolatiers of York, England. Mary Took reflected the Quaker conviction that chocolate did not contradict with a core belief in temperance. In 1910, the young teenage girls working as chocolate dippers at the McDonald Candy Company in Salt Lake City organized the first union of women workers in Utah and went on strike for safer working conditions and better pay. Luisa Spagnoli had an entrepreneurial spirit and ingenious mind, and her incomparable drive created a chocolate dynasty in Perugia, Italy. In 1922, when Luisa created the Baci Pergina brand, Luisa Spagnoli was 45 years old, deep in an illicit love affair with business partner Giovanni Butoni, 14 years her junior. Her marriage and family life suffered, but she put all her energy into the advertising and marketing of the Bachi chocolates. Luisa handcrafted the initial Bachi chocolates and wrapped love notes around them to test them with employees. These love notes were such a huge success with her staff that Luisa decided to include them in the retail Bachi. The range of love notes is vast, but the wording is brief, such as Love, Indefinable Love by Casanova, or I Understand Thy Kisses and Thou Mine by Shakespeare. This book takes you on a stunning, surprising, and moving tour of historic turning points in chocolate's history introducing you to the many women who toiled for this luxurious confection. Follow Connie Spinoza as she deftly guides you through this poignant bite of history and walks in the powerful steps of those women who sacrificed so much for the love of chocolate.